Guys, to be totally straight up and honest with you, I don't think Kamala Harris wants anything to do with this upcoming election cycle. Regardless of what the polls say, regardless of what all of the pundits are speculating about, I truly believe if she knew of some kind of a way to bow out of this gracefully and disappear off into the sunset, I think she would. And there is a fundamental concept of psychology that proves this. Why in the world would you want to take credit for or be saddled with the decisions made by someone else? Now, some people are like, well, wait a minute. Hold on. They were on a ticket together. She's just as responsible. Nobody's calling it Kamalanomics, are they? Nobody was saying that Kamala Harris had anything to do with the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. Nobody is saying that we have lost respect on the world stage because of Kamala Harris. But that's what she'll have to inherit. And that's why I don't think she wants it. I think she wants anything but to have to deal with this. And I know this is going to be real unpopular, but I think it's the exact same thing with the Obamas. You see, whether you think Biden did a good job or whether you think Biden did a bad job, some are saying, it's going to be Michelle Obama at the convention. They're not calling it Michelle Onomics, are they? And even then, she, he, it, whatever, Big Mike would have to traffic on the name and trade on the name of Barack Obama. It's a married name. These people are narcissists. Don't underestimate the power of narcissism and wanting to get full credit yourself for everything good and being able to blame everything bad on someone else. How many of you out there have ever had a job where the boss came to you and said, gosh, you're doing a great job. Man, you're one of the best out there. I have this whole new job title that I want to give to you. And it came with a whole bunch of responsibility, extra responsibilities, but zero actual authority to make changes and do things so that you were successful. Everybody has this story. Giving a person responsibility without authority is setting that person up for failure. And funny story, those of you who are fans over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel know where my stance is on modern North American marriage. You see, responsibility without authority is slavery. But authority being in charge with no responsibility is tyranny, and they exist simultaneously together in modern-day North American marriage. Now, once again, battlefield of the mind stuff. There's a lot of guys out there right now pounding their fists, saying, hell yeah, yep, that is exactly what's going on. But they also call themselves conservatives and one man, one woman marriage and all this kind of stuff. It's battlefield of the mind. It's a level of cognitive dissonance that causes a lot of guys to drink. It causes a lot of guys to abuse substances and be depressed and overeat and be overweight because they feel hopeless because they're in a slavery tyranny system. Just like we are in the country. Isn't that strange? If you'd like to join us at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel where we talk about more controversial subjects like that, it's only one U.S. dollar per month. That's it. A dollar a month pocket change. Less than the cost of a soda out of a machine once a month and you get access 24-7 365 to hundreds of videos going back many years talking about all sorts of controversial topics with some somewhat controversial imagery as well. I've gotten some pushback on that, but the truth is what the truth is. And we're not going to hold back. We do have that speed bump. There is a $5 level. We've had more than a few folks sign up at that level. God bless all of you who have. And once again, not for you. Think that you've just lost the money if you sign up. You've got 90 days, 90 days, full refund, no questions asked. Three months, three $1 bills, it's not for you, $3 right back at you, nothing lost. 
How many remember the the strip Dilbert before that got taken off for whatever reason? Guy sitting there saying, I hate being team leader. It's so stressful. I have responsibility, but no authority. I feel like I'm an animal in some more behavioral study. And of course, the fun part. But on the plus side, the pellets are excellent. You know, it's what men primarily in this country have been forced to accept. That as long as the pellets are, well, decent, it's worth the slavery. You see, Biden came in. Joe Biden came in and Joe Biden signed a bunch of executive orders. Kamala Harris didn't sign all those executive orders. The disaster at the border is not the the Kamala disaster, is it? It's the Biden disaster. The economy, the inflation, Biden inflation, Bidenomics. There is no way somebody is going to come in right now from his party and say, you know what? I'm going to take that mantle on myself and be saddled with all of that. Even if you believed the last three and a half years were a success, let's say that you were that deluded to think that that the last three and a half years were some incredible success. It wouldn't be your success. And if you tried to ride on that, you would have to continue to say, Bidenomics was a success for this, and Joe Biden did this great and that great and the other great. And Who would do that? Nobody would do that. You see... In other videos a few years ago, I talked about a lot of older folks in Florida who have been very blessed and had good health and been able to go do things like you know, swim and fish and golf and play tennis and ride bikes at the beach and all this kind of stuff, but they all have stories in their 70s and in their 80s of friends and compatriots who didn't make it as long as they did. And they saw the signs early. They saw the signs way before the doctors admitted anything for sure. They saw the signs and they had to sit down and they had to have the hard conversations with their children. And then their children had to have the conversation with their children about grandpa or great grandpa or great grandma and dementia. Now, just a few videos ago, Talking about Karine Jean-Pierre, 50 years old, the spokeswoman for the White House, absolutely snapped like a twig today. For those of you who didn't see it, it was pretty epic. She finally got tired of having to parse words and tell half lies and trade on the idea that Americans are addicted to plausible deniability. You see, since there isn't 110% evidence that Joe Biden is in some diagnosable state of mental decline, pardon me, since you can't prove it technically, there's nothing wrong, and she snapped when somebody called her out on her bullshit. Somebody finally stood up and said, you know what? You are withholding information. You are parsing words. You are fomenting lies of omission you are playing games with semantics about what being seen by a doctor means you are saying one thing one day and then trying to explain what you said the other day and she did she absolutely went off on this guy and tried to gaslight him and even even fox immediately afterward put it on their front page How she finally snapped. She finally snapped. And they're wondering, you know, where Trump is and why he's just been chilling out down at Mar-a-Lago. You see, he's in a tough position now. I'm sure a lot of people are like, why are we looking at images of Pence and Rubio? Well, you have to know something about the psychology of Donald Trump to understand what's going on right now. He doesn't want to win on the idea that his opponent just couldn't fight because he was so mentally incapacitated. Nobody wants to win a fight that way. You want to go out there, if you're going to be in a fight, you want to go out against somebody who's a peer, a peer-to-peer enemy, 
and you want to say that my training and my preparation and my ideas and my abilities were just better. Nobody wants to go out there and face somebody who is clearly, clearly not anywhere near at the top of their game. Now, some might say, great story. What does this have to do with, with Pence and Rubio? The reason Donald Trump picked Mike Pence back in 16 was because, number one, Pence brought the religious right, a group that he had a very, very hard time with, having been a Democrat playboy his whole life. But Mike Pence was this neutral effect person that nobody could really say that adding him brought Trump across the finish line. The polls really didn't change all that much by adding Mike Pence. See, a lot of people think, well, gosh, Trump should pick Tim Scott. Have you seen the polls? He, he had six points when he had Tim Scott. That's bad for Trump. See, as much as Trump doesn't want to beat up on Biden because Biden now is, you know, met in a state of, of mental incapacitation, it's no longer about ideas or that Trump is better, it's just that Biden is worse. With Pence gone now, the only person who fills that role, that zero neutral role, is Marco Rubio. Pent, Marco Rubio is the new Mike Pence. And this is my odds on pick. And this is why it has to do with the psychology of Donald Trump. Let me show you this, this poll that I'm talking about. They did a poll that if you added whatever VP candidate, would you be more or less likely to vote for Donald Trump? Scott, over just Trump by himself with nobody, Scott adds six points. Ramaswamy, zero. Rubio, zero. Um, Gabbard, Noam, Bergman, Stefanik all had negative effects. Now, Donald Trump might actually consider somebody who had a negative effect because he could say, well, I won dragging them across the finish line. They brought me down and they slowed me down, but I still won. You see, Ramaswamy is too big of a personality for Donald Trump. He would steal too much of Donald Trump's limelight. So he's not going to be the case. It's not going to be Tim Scott because there's no way, and here at 12 minutes and 30 seconds in, this is the idea. There's no way Donald Trump is ever going to allow any news pundit to say, well, gosh, that was a horse race between Trump and Biden, but Scott brought it home for Donald Trump. Picking, picking Scott, you know, fixed everything, and with, without Scott, boy, I don't know if Trump would have won. There's no way Trump is going to allow the media to even have that opportunity. You see, this is the opposite side of the coin from this. You see, they don't, they don't want to have to somehow try to build their own legacy around all of the media circus that would surround a 25th Amendment of Biden or Biden resigning or Biden bowing out of the race. The entire news cycle would not be talking about the leadership of this person or the leadership of that person. That this person here on the left, Big Mike, has to continually carry the name Obama, I think actually bothers Big Mike. And you add that, this, this guy's name over here. Yeah, believe it or not, Michelle Obama is not this person's maiden name or whatever you want to call it name. The entire Biden legacy and the Barack Obama legacy, I don't think she has any interest in trying to make herself distinct in some way. Whatever self, distinct in some way. See, it's authority without responsibility, responsibility without authority. Now, for those of you that think that I'm kind of loony on this, let's go back to June of 2016. This is five months before Donald Trump took office. Here were the top names for his running mate at that time. Gingrich, Rubio, Kasich, Christie, Corker, Cotton, Joni Ernst, Nowhere on this was Mike Pence. 
But Rubio was right at the top. Rubio was right at the top. And something, I guess, 15 minutes in, I wanted to mention yesterday that I didn't mention um, was a scripture. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And to see the anger and the hubris, and pay attention here, the pride come out of this woman's mouth was finally the telling moment. She's done very, very, very good job of pretending to be normal and rational and sane and mindful and thoughtful. Oh, this woman, you know how Jen Psaki uses a, used a circle back, circle back? This woman uses the word mindful about seven times a day in her press conferences. Well, she lost her mind today because she felt she was being treated unfairly. That her lies finally just were not being accepted. And people were like, you know what, we're sick. And it was the liberal media that actually held her to account. That said, look, and it was basically, I'll tell you what it was about. There's a neurologist, a Parkinson specialist, that has visited the White House eight times in the last eight months. And they were like, okay, who is this? And why is there a Parkinson specialist visiting the White House? And she just, because they wanted the name, and the name is public record that they could pull if they wanted to, but they wanted to have her address this person and what they were doing and all this kind of stuff. And she gave some lame brain, half-assed excuse that made absolutely no sense to logic. And they called her out on it. And she snapped like a twig. She called it disrespectful. You see, what they call respect is you just kowtowing and knowing your place. Kowtowing and knowing your place. Sound familiar? So, once again, Battlefield of the Mind would love to have, guys, trust me, These are videos you want to see. These are videos you definitely want to see because you're not going to hear anybody talk about it in public. It's a very uh, common form of censorship that we have accepted for a very long time as men that we need to stop accepting. And we need to start calling people out in public and stop being gaslit into calling it disrespect. It's not. It's not. When you're being manipulated, lied to, pushed around, shoved around, it's not disrespect to fight back and stand up for yourself. So once again, $1 a month, $5 a month, sign up for a year, don't sign up for a year, do it monthly, still got 90 days for a refund, absolutely no risk whatsoever. So once again, This man came into office and immediately started signing executive order after executive order after executive order to make it about his legacy and about him and Joe Biden this, Joe Biden that, and Bidenomics and Bidenflation and all this kind of stuff. Who in the world would want to follow that without saying it was completely wrong and I'm going to destroy it? Who would want to try to It'd be like, who's going to follow Trump? It's like, seriously, who's going to want to follow follow into those shoes? It's going to, you know, going forward, I guess I could uh, make this same argument over here. In four years, which one of these guys is going to, is going to be a, well, what percentage of Trump ism or or Trump like government do you think this person will have? Or what percentage of Trump government do, that it's all going to be a matter of that, of some measure of, you know, what percentage of Trump they are. Who the hell would want that? Who in the hell would want that? As if these people don't have their their own ideas and their own initiative and their own beliefs and wanting to chart their own course. Who, Who would want to do that? So, I will leave it there. I don't think she wants anything to do with it. 
because she'll never get credit for it. She'll never get credit for it. I'll leave it there. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.